the Bible says don't give place to the devil and this speaks, speaks I'm sorry speaks to Christians that means Christians are capable of giving place to the devil last year around summer uh, we all had a service in the park and I had people that lived with us and one of the requirements that anyone who, anybody who lived with us I always asked them please lock the windows and not just close the windows but lock the windows because how many of you know you can close the window and not lock the window and so but because people have hard hearts sometimes they would not check double check you know and when it's not your house you, you you don't care as much as it's in your own house so sometimes I would even walk into the rooms and double check just in case and find out the windows to be open or doors left unlocked and we were all worshiping God in the park having a fabulous time and I come back to the house and I see in the house a wind at first I thought it was like the wind of the Holy Spirit you know so I was like whoo this is awesome I felt something different but I quickly realized the Holy Ghost isn't in this house yet and so I, I check one of the rooms and I find out the window is open wide open and I see fingerprints like a like a glove prints on the walls right away and the, the screen is removed and I quickly realized that our house got broken into one of the reasons I realized the house was broken into is because the car was missing <laughs> It's kind of duh. I look through my stuff and I see all of our drawers are open and for the first time I felt it almost feels like you're being violated when you just realize somebody went through your stuff. Nothing was taken except the car and the car happened not to be mine. So there was a sense of relief. And the car was supposed to be given to somebody and so if you can switch that's actually the guy that's the car that the person uh, took and so the person the, the ironic part is the 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 room that this person broke into this person who lived with us happened to drive around Pasco uh, downtown after midnight that's another ironic thing which one could go for another time and so and then this person finds out this car parked in downtown Pasco there with a note inside of the car and I want you to see the note I'm sorry for stealing <laughs> now unfortunately Satan is a thief he will you will never experience this with Satan that's what I'm going to tell you I'll bro right away but the person who stole in my house and broke into my house was studying me they knew they watched for nobody to be there and they got me figured out and it took me once or someone in my house once to make a mistake this person didn't attack me I've never seen him physically and I have never seen him before never seen him afterwards he never stabbed me he never urged me the only thing he did he slipped into a window that was open took something and left it's interesting when Jesus talked about Satan he says one of the first characteristics of Satan is he comes to steal. As a thief he remains anonymous. As a thief his goal is not to stay but to steal. See Satan comes to kill that's when the demonic oppression and demonic possession comes in. But the first strategy of Satan if he cannot possess you and oppress you and torment you he wants to sneak in take stuff and leave. That's why sometimes you will feel like something is missing in my life you know what's missing it's whatever Satan took how did he take it there was an open door I have about six windows and two doors and one garage door after that I realized I cannot rely on me or people living in my house to keep the windows and the doors locked so I, I invented this Russian reinforcer <laughs> I'm giving you tips today of how to secure your life the blood of Jesus and the fire of the Holy Ghost and wooden sticks from Lowe's. What you do is you put this in so even if you forget to lock the window and close the window you stick them in so that nobody can open your window because they have this wooden piece. I installed cameras in my house. I bought fake stickers that say I have security in my house and those of you who are getting ideas I have cameras. You can't break in and I started to, I bought locks that the moment I get out of my house they self-lock in 30 seconds. And so I, I reinforced why because I have valuables in our, my house and I don't want thieves to break in. Just last week 25 break-ins happened in one week in Kenwick. If there's one thing you're gonna get out of coming to church today, reinforce your house and your car.
the Bible gives us at least 10 different windows to your personal life and your soul and I want to mention them today not just to but maybe to if you're noticing something is missing in your life to maybe to double check is this part of my life open to demonic influence and if it's not to just reinforce one of the reasons we don't sin as Christians it's not just so we stay away from jail and we don't go to hell and all this stuff. The reason why we, we don't sin as Christians is so Satan stays away from us. If there is no heaven and hell, if there is no eternity, I would still not want to sin. Just because I don't want to have a thief in my house. The same way I keep my windows and doors locked. Why? Because I want safe things in my house to be safe. And so the first open door that many times is mentioned in the Bible and that is occult. That is the biggest one. Horoscopes, Ouija boards, dream catchers, talking to the dead, uh, all kinds of uh, Ouija boards and connecting with the dead, a levitation and, and every shape and form of occult. Any teaching or a religion that does not believe in Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord is an occult. Is an occult. They might be good people but deceived. Number two, the open door is disrespect for parents. Bible clearly indicates contempt for your parents is open door for curse. You can mark my word, no one who dishonors their parents will have a blessed life. You can have a PhD dishonoring your parents but not a blessing. On your life there is a curse. The Bible clearly states that you may say that's an Old Testament and everything. It's all over the Bible where disrespect for your parents is an open door for the devil. He might not oppress you and possess you but he will take stuff. Number three, open door is injustice to weak and helpless. It's when you hurt the needy or people who are weak. I definitely believe if you commit abortion, you open the door to the demonic. God can forgive you but you need to renounce that and you need to find freedom and reinforce your life by never doing it again because it's a murder. It's hurting someone who is weak and helpless and that is an open door for the demonic intrusion. The next one is illicit unnatural sex or incest. It's when people participate in sex that is not natural, illicit and the Bible mentions here things like you know sleeping with your mother or sleeping with your sister or sleeping the things that are just unnatural and things that are illicit and especially uh, having uh, physical relationships with animals. The next one is anti-semitism. If you notice that in your family or even in yourself you have, you have this contempt or you have this hate toward the Jews or disrespect for the Jews, I truly believe you really need to double check how you became a Christian because every author of this book is Jewish. Your savior is Jewish. He was born to a Jewish people and so and he's coming back not to America, New York, Washington DC. He's coming back to Jerusalem and the Bible says the whole history is going to be around that nation and so you might not be part of that nation. You might not understand that nation but you have to have deep respect for that nation because that brings the blessing of God in your life. Can somebody say amen? The next open door and that we need to reinforce is accursed things. It's when you and I invite things into our house that have been dedicated to Satan and demons in the form of charms, in the form of dream catchers, in the form of things that have been, Bible calls it abominable or cursed. They've been dedicated to Satan and demons. If you bring them, especially objects that you pick up on your traveling or you pick up sometimes on Indian reservation and things that have been a curse, they can bring sickness, they can bring disease and they can bring nightmares and other attacks of Satan in your life. Sometimes actually there are accursed places. Places where somebody committed suicide or places where murder happened could become haunted. Demons, they get locked in that place and anyone who moves in there, they seek to torment. For us as Christians, it's very easy. If you have a title did for that place anointing oil anointing water any other that's anointed you come boom, 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 and you tell the devil you're not paying bills get out and that's it and you take authority over that and you live for the glory of God I remember when me and my wife we bought our second duplex and we moved in there and it was a drug house I checked the title make sure that they didn't have a lien toward the, the duplex and they said the lien is clean but the whole neighborhood knew this is where they did drugs I even know some people who got saved in the church who did drugs in my previous duplex so I knew it was a drug house and so we took a uh, spray, we sprayed it with, with uh, vinegar first then I sprayed it with anointing water, vinegar for, was for the walls and anointing water was for the spirits and so we cleaned it up. As we started to clean the house I found out that in the basement there was a hole and a dead cat was buried there. 
And so I didn't, I sent somebody else to take it out. And so we took it out. I remember I sprayed it and I knew that there was something unnatural about that. So I took the anointing water, sprayed it and, and anointing oil and everything. And I just dedicated that house and everything unclean. And I know God on purpose allowed us to find that cat to remove every cause of it. Because the last thing I wanted is sleep there and have nightmares and all kinds of demonic things that happen in my life. It's my house. We pay the bills and we're going to enjoy God's blessing. But we have to remove the accursed things. Can somebody say amen? The next thing that opens the door is stealing and perjury. On your home group you will read the Zechariah chapter 5 verse 4 where God says person who steals will have a curse on their house and that the frame of their house is going to fall apart. It's actually crazy how stealing, perjury, taking stuff that's not yours destroys your finances your retirement and everything that you have and it's an open door if you steal whether it's cyber stealing whether it's shoplifting whether it's just taking things from your boss that, that you don't uh, that you don't um, earn you must understand that is an open door for a demonic intrusion he might not possess you or torment you but he will take the opportunity to steal things from you and God doesn't want that to happen the next one is stinginess toward God we hear that verse all the time the next one is offense the Bible says the person who was had unforgiveness was delivered to torturous and tormentors and today in this message I just want to take a moment and pause on the last one murmuring I genuinely believe I'm not talking about occasional murmuring I'm talking about a murmuring that has become part of your character that opens the door to demonic write this down murmuring or complaining does to Satan what worship does to God. God inhabits the praises of his people. Satan inhabits the complaints of his people. God seeks such that worship him in spirit and in truth. Satan seeks that 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 complain to him and grumble and whine. Twenty twelve I was diagnosed with sleep apnea. I, um, how I got to that point was I caught myself snoring. It wake me up middle of the night or during the day when I was taking a nap. And so I went to the family doctor and um, he said, well, let's go and have a sleep test and find out what's going on. I went to the sleep test four hours they hook you up with wires and put them on your head and you go to sleep at night and the four four hours tests what's going on with your breathing and the results from that test was i was stopping breathing 27 times every hour during the night that's 27 times that I could die within that same hour. That's not a good thing. So they set me up with a CPAP machine. I went home with it for a couple years and I needed to have a new test done as I wasn't, I was starting to snore again. The second test found that I was stopping breathing 45 times in one hour. Forty-five times to die. I've got a family. I've got grandkids. And sleeping with a sleep apnea and a CPAP, you put it on. It's got hoses. You can end up throwing that machine across the wall if you're not used to it. But I was drug out. It drains you when you have sleep apnea. You don't. You don't. You don't have. You don't wake up very well. You're exhausted every day. But 45 times for that last test result, there was something else that I needed to do. I got invited to, my daughter invited me to her church and I really liked the church. And it, 
you know, I got to know the people, the, the pastors and everybody there. And then I decided I wanted to go through their prayer line and to just see what was going on because I just didn't feel things were right with me. And um, going through the prayer line, I noticed I didn't feel right. I, just, I wanted to leave, but I myself, I said, no, I'm staying here. I'm going to go through this, and I'm, whatever's going to happen is going to happen. It's for good reason. And a demon manifested inside me and came out. And he was tormenting me. He'd been tormenting me for a long time. And they, his name is the Destroyer. And I am so glad he's gone. I am so glad he's gone. He really messed with me. After after I got delivered from that, I said I'm going to. God is. God has done wonders in, the, in delivering me from this demon. I am going to prove my faith. I am going to try sleeping without my CPAP machine. And I did. And I woke up energized and ready for a new day, a new start, new everything. And so I went and saw the family doctor again. And they did another test for my sleep apnea. And no, I had no sleeping problems whatsoever that night on the tests and the machine showed on the little, the little cards that are on my machine that I didn't stop breathing at all during that night after I got delivered. The doctor, after, that, after his test, he said, you don't need the machine anymore and released me completely from using the CPAP machine. And since then, for the last four months, my energy level is tremendous. I'm doing things with my family that I wasn't able to do before because I was just drug out. I went on a cruise with my husband and <laughs> I didn't snore him out of the room <laughs> like I used to. So we had an awesome time on the cruise and um, energy level is just awesome. And all I can say is for anybody out there, any issues, medical issues that you have, have faith. Go back to God because he is the one he is our healer. He is our one and only. And I thank him for what he's done for me because he is. He's healed me. He's been healing me. My name is Linda Lampton, and this is my story.